hi, it's me in my home. But eventually I have to leave and go do the show in the studio where I'll be talking to Boy George and Frankie DeTore, at last a man I can look down on. And then I'm going to be finding out if going out with a rich man can make you happy. Duh. And then at the end of the show, I'm going to be massaging a naked man. And I'll need a lot of rehearsal for that. Do you hear me? I need a lot. As a matter of fact, let's rehearse now. Get him out. <laughs> Welcome to my show. This series is all about how to survive life in the 21st century and how to get through it unscathed. Today, amongst other things, we're going to be talking about relationships. I mean, it seems you spend the first half of your life finding a mate and the second half of your life figuring out how to dump them. In the name of finding a mate myself, I've shaved off enough leg hairs to cover the equator twice. But first, I'd like to introduce someone who's going to help me out today, Boy George. Is it insulting when somebody calls you Boy George? Because I saw you when you were boy. I don't know what you are now. I'm still Boy George. You're still Boy George. Would I be Girl Ruby or am I like way too old? No, you'd be Girl Ruby. Could I be Girl Ruby? Yeah. Okay, in the right lights? Actually, you're looking very Girl Ruby today. I am say, I? Yeah. Really? Because you knew me when I was very young and very lovely. You're still young and lovely. Why are you being so nice to me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. He had a rough night. So that's why he's being so kind of um, still and mysterious, because he was up, t up till what time in the morning? Oh, I'm telling you. Mind your own business. No, tell us. <laughs> we want to know, don't we? And what were we eight doing? Eight o'clock. Eight you danced till eight? Isn't that sad for someone 40? No, it was fantastic. <laughs> no, it is. It's a wonderful. What just were you jealous. I am jealous, because I can't do it anymore. What were you looking for? Um, Love? What was I looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Distraction. Was that it? Yeah. Because you don't have your boyfriend anymore. Oh, you're really going for the jugular Well, now. let's go straight. No, no, we'll go back. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that later. All right, they did a musical about your life. because No, it's not the story of my life. It's the story of the period. Sort of late 70s, early 80s, new romantic period. Right. And it's a postcard of that time. So it's not just about me. It's about people like Lee Bowery, Marilyn, Steve Strange, all these characters that were kind of... Is that weird, seeing people coming in to audition as you? The guy that's playing me was actually, play, was actually chosen by one of my oldest friends called Philip Salon. He uh, came to the workshop and watched it and just insisted that this boy was me. And is he you to you? Oh, yeah. Really? Okay, well, let's see a clip. A club was run by a character called Lee Bowery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Lee with us? No, he's not. That's what I thought. Side. And Lee's in it? I mean, a guy playing Lee in. He's been played by Matt Lucas. Oh, really? George, George Doyle's on the scores. And do you direct the guy who's you? No. What do you mean, do I direct? I him? mean, do you tell the guy who's you, you know, who's playing you, <laughs> that you wouldn't do that, you would do this? Oh, yeah, of course. That's so what I, I mean. stick my nose into every aspect of the show. And does he, does he imitate the way you speak? Because this guy looks quite heterosexual. Who's playing you? Um, I can't answer that question without my lawyer present. <laughs> <laughs> so 2,000 people auditioned to play you? Yeah. Wow. And did you choose or no? I always knew it was going to be him, Ewan. Right. And what did he do before this? Uh, he's been on the bill. He's been in other musicals. Oh, so he's famous. He's not famous. He will be famous. It was The Voice. You know, his voice is a little better than yours. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, he can hit those notes. He can hit those He's notes bad. I can't do anymore. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, no. Does that make you sad when you, you know, like an athlete who used to be able to jump seven feet, you know, like as a musician? Does Next it make well, you... I've got a more lived-in voice. It's very Mary... You're going toward Mary and Faithful very quickly. No, 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 I'm not. No. Why is it so lived-in? I mean, you shouldn't... At 40, you know, a lot of opera stars are hitting their peak. So why do you sound like this? 
Why do I sound like what? Rough. <laughs> Have I sung a note? No, but even speaking, it's a kind of more, it's a more husky voice. Yes, well, it's very early in the morning. Oh, is that what it is? And so what do you do now with your life? <laughs> but professionally, we'll start off professionally. Well, I do You're a with DJ my life. Now. I run around the country DJing at clubs. Is that fun? Yeah. Gorgeous boys. I bet. <laughs> and it's very sexy seeing a DJ. I mean, that's the kind but of... But the other thing is, as well, is that I don't ever pick up gay men. It's only the straight men that are ever interested in me. I know. I know so many people Bit of like eyeliner, that. and it does the trick. Mm. And once you find out you're, they're gay, do you drop them? No. But you're just not even attracted? No. Why? Do you know what I mean? It would be so practical, and it would fit so nicely into a I life. I have been out with people who are, are homosexual. <laughs> right. But then I think everyone's a bit of everything anyway. You're a bit dykey, aren't you? I'm completely dykey. <laughs> That's so kind. Um, let me just read the quote you said. You said about George Michael. It said, then I called him a closet on Radio 1. He was touring Australia and said he was going to kick my butt. I retorted, don't you mean fondle? <laughs> He's really open when he talks about all this stuff, like, at a, you know, when you meet him privately, but maybe he's kind of bored about talking about it on TV. Well, there are kind of proper homosexuals. That's where I would put George Michael. He's a proper one. Yeah, proper homosexual. Because? S slightly respectable. D as far as the details. Well, he got caught in a toilet. Is that respectable? Well, he was up until that point. <laughs> right. See, I'm a romantic. I don't go to toilets. You never go to toilets. No. Unless they have chandeliers. No, I like cotton sheets. <laughs> you know, You're the nice five-star homo. Yeah, I'm, I like to be romanced. <laughs> yeah. I'm not into all that bushes and... Oh, no. Well, don't look down on it. It's just another thing. It's not for me. Okay. I've seen quite a few future husbands in here today, actually. <laughs> Who would you like if you could, if we were, if I said to you, okay. They know as well. Who? Like who? Roger. Can we just look at Roger? There's Roger. Oh, isn't Roger cute? Uh, I'd have shorts. Roger. If you had to have one of us, Roger, which one would you have? Yeah. <laughs> Roger, which one? <laughs> Is he gay? If he's not gay, I'm kill myself. <laughs> Are you straight, Roger? Are you straight? Am I straight? Yeah. Yes. You know, if, if you are straight, you're so fired. <laughs> you're so yeah. insulted. Do you know how long? Like, show me. Cute. He? You, are you with someone today? Yeah. That's your girlfriend? Well, then you're really his type. <laughs> and how would you go about, like, breaking him down? Like, if, you know, clearly he's with a woman, if you really wanted him well, to. Well, if he's with a woman, I wouldn't go right. near him. All right, let's say we got rid of her. <laughs> it's the nose, I love noses. But you know, you're very seductive, so I can imagine a man just finding you irresistible. Some do, some don't. I can't imagine who wouldn't. Let me do another <laughs> quote, because these quotes are good. Do you mind? Not at all. You're gonna she anyway. didn't recognize me and treated me like a pestering fan. Later, one of her entourage approached me with a video camera and asked me to say hi to Janet. I told him to stick the camera up her. She was a stuck-up cow. Who are we talking about there? Janet Jackson. And, and was she? Or were you pleasantly surprised when you did meet no. her? No. She was stuck up. She's an actress. Really? She came to my dressing room crying. And it was so fake. Because? <laughs> because I went up to her out of makeup and said, I just bought your record, it's fantastic. And she went... <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, someone came up with a camera and asked me, she said, when I had my slap on, right. would you say hello to Janet? I said, yeah, tell her to stick it up her Good for you. <laughs> and then she came, like, the tears, but they oh. were so Hollywood. Saying what? What were the words? I'm so sorry, I didn't know it was you. I said, I don't care if you knew it was me or not. Yeah, well, that's If I was a cleaner, I bought your record. You should have treated me with the same respect. Good for you. Very good for you. <laughs> I think that he's just up for Ed. Must be mad being a Jackson, though. Come on. Oh, of course. It's in the gene pool. It's bad enough being an O'Dowd. Total madness. Can you imagine what goes yeah. on in that head? Her howling confirmed all my fears. Who was that about? Madonna. What does that mean? Her howling confirmed all my fears. I don't know if I said that. You said it. It I says did. it was you. It's in your book. Did you write your book? <laughs> I did. Is that you? <laughs> it's in your you, book. Should we get um, the page out just to bring it all back? Well, you know. For me, music is about soul. I think we live in, live in an age where people respect success more than they do talent. Mm. And I, you know, we don't respect people for being arms dealers. <laughs> you know, oh, he's made millions out of selling arms, so well, we must respect Well, because Shoki got his name on the thing, not because he's a beautiful individual. Yeah, I know, but people talk about Madonna like, you know, she's, you know, like she 
she sa the saviour of music? Well, the only reason I think that that she ultimately won... Joni is, Mitchell. But Joni Mitchell only lasted for... I know, I love Joni, Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell is a genius. Yeah, but still, Madonna lasted, and lasting is the ultimate. Oh. Well, she's still around. I know, and she just won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your greatest relationship? Uh, oh, it's yet to come. Have you had any in the past where you thought, oh, I'm close here? Uh, about two months ago. And what was his name? Julian. Julian. And he says hello. And where did we meet? Uh, in a tropical storm. Really? I'm joking. <laughs> Is that a club? It's a Bob Dylan lyric. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know because I was born much later. Okay. <laughs> um, what was it that attracted you first? Is it a um, type? No, I don't have a type. Is it a vibe? Normally it's eyes with me. Yeah, I'm sure. And? Because you can tell a lot about people from their eyes. What's your hair like? Um, under a hat. Yeah, you're not going to show it to me? No. Why? Because I'm not, obviously. All right, no, no, I'm just What curious. are your knickers like? <laughs> I'll show you if you show me what's under your hat. No. And what's, thank you. Remember what I was talking about before, that we're going to ask, what do you look for in a relationship? Because I always think if you lack something in your personality, a lot of times you'll look for it in the other person to compensate. You know, this expression, the other half. Well, you know, the other half is never going to compensate for what you're lacking in your heart of hearts or whatever. So, you know, it's interesting what you think you want from somebody else. So I want to ask somebody in the audience that, what, what do you look for when you're looking for a partner? Are you a couple? You're both cute. So what, what do you look for, or what does he look for? I'm going to sit here, between your legs. No, here, like this. I like that look. <laughs> what do you two look for? Um, just companionship, just friendship. Someone who's on the same wavelength. Right. How long have you been together? Eight, Eight months. months. Yeah. Eight months, right. And do you think you're, this is the partner for you? Um, <laughs> well, go on. Um, yeah, it's good at the moment. It's good at the moment. One step, one day. Right, so where are we now? What's the big draw? Is it friendship, sex, or love? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not, I don't have time to beat around the bush. All of them. Let's get right in there. Um, friendship, friendship, yeah, definitely friendship, working yeah. from that. Really. Right, okay. You're hoping it goes on to something yeah, else. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Right. Where, where are we now? We're close to love or mm -hmm. close to I'd sex? Say. Yeah. <laughs> no, I won't say that. <laughs> My shirt's falling apart. I, you know, it wasn't the right shirt to wear, was it? With my insight. Does my stomach look fat? No. You would tell me, wouldn't you? Of okay, thank you. That's your job from now on. Just shout out, fat. <laughs> fat. Here, you. Hi. Are you here alone? I am. Oh, oh right. So, so what are you looking for in a partner? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> well, so far... Don't look at oh, my stomach. Can I come and sit on here? <laughs> you, can, yeah, you come sit here. Come on, you can. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you go sit on him up there? <laughs> go on, just do it for us. Go on, you sit on George. <laughs> on him, no, on him. Um, you two get, to, on get to know each other and then I'll just ask here. What um, do you look for? Well, it's changed and it changes all right. the time. I don't think you can sort of say, right, that's what I want because in the past I've asked for, yes, that's what I want in a guy. And what do you want? Well, what is it? Um, a bit of everything. Yeah, well, everybody wants everything, <laughs> but do you get it? Um, Last time I did, but it, it was good on a friendship level. Right. Um, because the things that I asked for, I've got, and that's all I've got. But I What did you ask for? I asked for someone that I could have a really good uh, friendship with, um, that we had a lot in common with, that I could learn from, and could teach me things right. to sort of carry me through to the future. And did you get it? I got it, but I didn't get any of the other side of it. Oh, no sex? And um, no love? Uh, yeah. Right, yeah, so what happened so, to this person? Um, well, we're sort of fizzling out at the moment. Oh, right, yeah. So we're still together, but it's it's solicitor Do you time, want more? So. Oh, oh, you're getting a divorce. <laughs> yeah, oh, congratulations. <laughs> That's lovely for you. Well, good luck. Thank you. You know, you do start off, you want, like, you know, when you're a kid, you know, you aim for the most beautiful boy. You know, the cheerleader always gets the uh, football player and everything, and then suddenly you realize gradually you can't have it. What? Man is gay. Is he? Yeah. Oh, so I guess you got to sit back down again. He's not. Not at all. Are you still interested? Yeah. That's fantastic. What is your name? It's so important in this Mac. relationship. Mac. Mac. Right. So would you like to like to meet later in the uh, day today? Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can make that dream come true, can't we? We have right some money. Answer. We can send.
send you on your dream date to not a toilet, a very lovely area. <laughs> Off you go to your seat. There you go. <laughs> All right, talking about partners, we're going to show you a couple clips here and ask you what you think of him and would you spend the rest of your life with him. So can we see the first person, please? That person, do you find him attractive? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Yeah. What if she I told you? What? She likes Roger. Yeah, we're do doing you? a deal. We're she gonna does. Get, we're going to get Roger's number. Get Roger's number because he hasn't got a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what if I told you this man was worth 200 million pounds? Um, you could learn to love him? <laughs> uh, he's yeah. a bit too old, maybe. Yeah, well, you're going to get that with yeah. the money. <laughs> All right, next one. Do you find him attractive? Show the next one. No. You. you, do you find him attractive? No. At all? Not at all. It, would you find him more attractive if I told you he was worth 300 million? I'd try. Yeah. <laughs> you know, see, when you get older, you get more desperate. <laughs> okay, let me show you another one. I what? thought women had more depth than that. No, none. <laughs> would you be tempted by marriage by this man? That one? <laughs> would you? No. Okay, what if I told you he was worth 973 million pounds? Would that change your mind? No. Happily married, 30 years. I would dump my husband for <laughs> really an eighth of that. You would? I try and like right. him. Well, anyway, all right, you may not be swayed by him, but here's someone who was. Would you meet Claire Johnson? <laughs> She's got the guy worth 300, not, excuse me, she's got the guy worth 973 million pounds. And look how happy she looks. <laughs> she doesn't look like she's Wouldn't suffering. Would you be? <laughs> yeah, I would be, actually. So did you, um, were you wealthy as a small child? Reasonably, yes. Yeah, but, um, but not 973 no million pounds, not no. Not in my wildest dreams. No. no. So how, how, you know, what type of, did you work in a shop as a kid or what? Um, I had quite a privileged upbringing, went to convent school, right. did nice things, so yeah, I'm quite used to living a good life. And what, did you dream of like, you know, the Cinderella complex when we dream of this Prince Charming that may come in and make us have a better life, as I did? I always thought a man would come in and, you know, I would have, because I saw all those films like How to Marry a Millionaire. Yeah. So the ultimate husband was kind of, you know, even though he pretended to be a bricklayer at the end, he'd surprise you and say, no, I'm a multimillionaire. <laughs> and I'd go, oh, well, then get out of here. I'd rather the bricklayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I would. The rough and ready type. So did you ever go out with a guy who was just like normal and not rich? Yes, I've been out with gorgeous looking guys right, who and? absolutely had no money to speak of whatsoever. And to a degree, yes, was, there were some successful relationships, but at the end of the day, I love excitement and I love excitement. Can't you have excitement? Well, you can, I know. But <laughs> I can. Yeah. Can you, you have excitement without money? Yes, I'm sure you can, but money can enhance en excitement. Enhance excitement. Yes. Well, money gives you freedom. I yeah. don't think it gives you excitement. I think it depends oh, that's true. How, how you. It depends go what with you it. call excitement. Yeah. I think it excites you. Yes, it yeah. does. Well, yes. She married the first husband, who was uh, not a billionaire, but a, mil no. a mere millionaire. <laughs> and, um, you know, what was, what was that like in the beginning? Was that unbelievably exciting? Yes. I was completely put on a high pedestal, adored, given a beautiful lifestyle, and loved dearly, yes. Yeah, and what did you have to give back for that high lifestyle? Lots of love and affection. That's it. And did you um, get presents from him right away, or did you have to train him to give you presents? Immediately. You mm. got presents or trained Yes. Him? No, no, no. No training whatsoever. I got loads of presents. Like? Tell us. We want to know. Um, mm. Jewelry. How much worth? Um, 20000 For a... Uh, piece of jewelry yeah for a couple right. of pieces of jewelry mm -hmm. yeah yeah tell me what he looked like he was very tall larger than life was he fat yes yeah <laughs> there you got to compensate so much the uh, the jewelry for when they're fat did oh, you choose same. that on purpose like to get an uh, an unattractive man cuz yeah. then you'd really yeah, yeah. yeah. it's very i went for a fat they're guy much once safer. and yeah well then oh, what happened did. And I found him in bed with my best friend. <laughs> so you were wrong. Yes, I wrong, was wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yes, I admit I was wrong. Yeah, sure. Um, can you just take me through it. You're coming into the house. You put the car keys down. You go upstairs. Oh, no, I was already in bed. Um, we'd with had the, a... With the back of the <laughs> Take over. Help me. Help me on this. You're already in bed, and? We'd all been partying together. I'd retired early, and they carried on. 
and the music was so loud I went downstairs to ask them to turn it down and uh, lo and behold they were in a you know Wow. Well, I won't, I won't say on the What's daytime show do, what do, do, do you like look for a gun or do you just... <gasps> I panicked. I panicked. What did he say? Oops, I'm looking for my contact. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Uh, it's he, not what you think. No. It, it, well, nothing actually. <laughs> I actually ran out of the house and he I didn't do anything. They just both looked at me as if to say, well, you're on the way here. There was no apology or anything actually. Ever an apology? N not immediately. Right. No. no. So you, you, now doesn't that make you mistrust your instincts? Yes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> How'd you meet the billionaire? I saw a picture of him. I didn't know who he was. Right. And he was in one of these Rich List magazines. Do you, why would you be looking through a Rich List? Just out of curiosity. Oh, I just mean, do you look through Rich List? Flicking the through the Sunday paper. Like looking for does. the next husband, like a man <laughs> I'm in the back of Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Everything must go this week only. <laughs> then you, did you go to the, well, you went to the gym. Did you yes. say, hey, I remember this guy? It wasn't until after. I'd seen him at the gym first. Didn't sort of immediately think of who he was or where he was. And I was with somebody else at the time anyway. And... Then I saw him again, and by this time we started to have eye contact and smiles. I thought, hmm, and this big smile and his gorgeous muscles. I thought, he's gorgeous. So he's gorgeous and gorgeous. he has money. Yeah. What's the catch then? There isn't any catch. There's no catch. I think you just have a nose for it. <laughs> I think you have a nose for it. Well, you know, I struggle when I meet people. I can't always meet a plumber or an accountant. Or... It's very easy. You just call them and wait 10 years. They'll show up. <laughs> So, what's your house look like? How many rooms have you got? Uh, 92 rooms. Mm. Yeah. Did you sleep with him and then he... I mean, how did the whole moving in thing? You just move in one day and no, that's no, no. the new house? We, we had quite a sort of growing right. process what? of dating, going out, um, and then he uh, bought a yacht in the summer. So we went... We spent about four weeks. Um, I went on the maiden voyage trip with him. And, and do you love him more and more the more like toys he brings out? I mean, I would, okay? It's exciting, yeah. of course it's yeah, exciting. Yeah. I, I got a huge and buzz from it. And when did you get it. your first present? Um, and what was it? It was a beautiful necklace on the holiday, actually, yeah. Let me look in your handbag. Let's see, what a, <laughs> let's see what a rich chick has in her handbag. Is that real from 14th Street? <laughs> this is real, sweetheart. You can smell it. Yeah, yeah. it's real LV. This is the um, mobile phone that he gave you? Yes. And how much... This baby is 3,000 pounds alone. Are they real diamonds? Are they real diamonds? No. I, I don't know, actually, the, his, the history of the phone, because... She just got it. I She's just got his yeah. presents. See, you and I, that's why she we don't get... on the tube. That's why you and I don't get guys like this, because we just go straight to a shop and go, are they real? Check them, are they real? What else? Then the Chanel... Jackie O sunglasses, I suppose. Oh, there we are. Yep, the Chanel glasses. <laughs> Do you mind me doing this? No, it's no. too late anyway. Let's just. <laughs> Let's see. Well, we got the makeup to become more She's beautiful. To to me, the Tesco the card. Look. Do you shop at Tesco? I do, Do yes. you? And you get 50p off here. Look at that. <laughs> She's got her coupons. Look at her. Look, it's early That's days. That's what we now trained in, Ruby. Right. Everything has to be a deal. I'd bet. John will not purchase anything unless he gets a good deal or discount. And he's training me. How did he make his money then? By pure hard work in the phone industry. Right. What, what phone? Like he owns what? Yeah, he owns um, one of the biggest phone companies in the country. Mm -hmm. Marks and Spencer's five pounds. <laughs> That's so touching. <laughs> and if you lost it all tomorrow, would you still love him? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, she's got a few crackers in case she gets hungry. <laughs> it's so telling, isn't it? <laughs> what else? I'm interested in the diary. <laughs> I'm interested in the diary too. Who's Gary we have a Williams? Tam Bex, <laughs> Only one. <laughs> All right. What else? Not Look evil. in the diary. Go on. See if. <laughs> so, uh, like, if you had to sum it up, does a rich man make you happy? Yes. Yes. He's perfect, Ruby. Yeah. You know, people look. How do you know that the same thing won't happen, though? How do you know? You know that you already had an experience with it. I don't know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more pragmatic now. I'm not. Because they will not to tolerate me. you getting old. You know these guys no. want perfection, don't they? Surgery. Surgery. Okay. <laughs> so any downsides that you can see coming? Because now you're smarter and older. Yeah. What do you see coming? I've obviously, you know, you can't be complacent with um, a man like John because obviously there are thousands, millions of women who would step in my shoes straight away. So do you, you have to be wary that another woman's coming in. Yeah. So you've got to be on your toes today. See, yeah. I would be exhausted. Yeah. 
Because I like well, my husband because no, I can be covered in stains, you know, and eat chicken and <laughs> just look like hell. So can I. So you can, can I. Oh, yeah. You can look like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but then another woman comes in and she's, you know, she's compact and snazzy and the newest model of whatever, of femme de fatale. <laughs> and I'd be scared. Uh, it does stay in the back of my mind. Yeah. But I'm very comfortable the way things are between Will you us. be more comfortable when he asks you to marry him? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> but not that anything is a guarantee. Breed his children. That's got a foothold. Try to plop out as many children as you can and fill those 94 rooms and you've got a bigger chance of staying there. You can pick up your own stuff. Anyway, you see how complex it is. The quest to find the perfect mate um, takes up so many hours of our lives, especially talking with your girlfriends or whoever. It takes up so much time talking about relationships. I mean, probably more hours than it took to create the universe. But there are some people who can make life much easier and eliminate this waste of time. Please welcome Prague Bagava, who co-runs the Suman Marriage Bureau. So you would eliminate all this time spent on yibbering about what we're looking for. Absolutely. Why waste time doing the search when uh, the agents are there? When the agency can do it for you. So what do you do? Tell me about this agency. Well, we, we are a marriage bureau and we provide introductions for the purpose of marriage. Right. And is that because of your religion or because that's just uh, something you're interested in? Yeah, it started off uh, based on culture. Um, within the Asian culture, arranged marriages are obviously a, a very uh, important and, and, and thing. So how many successful marriages have you uh, We have done in excess of 6,000 marriages in our history. A and what is your history? Uh, coming, well, we've just entered our 30th year of operation. And how many are successful? Uh, majority are. We now got the second generation coming to us with their parents who have been introduced to us in the past. Right. And so when they come to you, are they interested in money, sex, or love? Uh, I can tell you sex straight away doesn't come into it because it's, it's an after marriage met. thing. As, as <laughs> so far what's as the difference? Yeah. You know, you open the doggy um, bag after the feast. Money and love, but, but love again in the traditional arranged marriage, love used to come afterwards. Previously. How could love come if, you know, you're taking, like, you, it, it's, uh, you know, you're just picking like from a hat like rabbits that don't know each well, other. Well you see the traditional arranged marriage concept was that two parents, two sets of parents would talk to each other and, and uh, fix up the, the marriage of their son and daughter and after the marriage obviously... Based on? Based on compatibility, family status, How do they education. know? My parents didn't know anything about me. It's supposed to be the experience. I mean some marriages have gone wrong and, and it does happen. Um, but uh, the, the whole traditional aspect of it was that parents would get the two individuals together. Um, they would have some chance to at least see each other, if not talk to each other. Uh, and this I'm talking about 30 or 40 years back. Right. And, uh, when did they see each other? How, how before the Well, wedding? in my own parents' case, they saw each other three days before the marriage. And, and did she uh, like what she saw? Yeah, she liked Clearly the photograph. Clearly you wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here otherwise, that's right. I mean, she, she saw the photograph initially, and uh, my father was in England. Uh, he then went back for the marriage, and they actually met three days before, but they never spoke to each other. Um, the first words were probably uttered on the day they got married. Um, you mean they just look like they're looking at meat in a Well, yeah, I mean, shop? my mum just sat there like this, uh, you know, from what I've been told, and she sort of tried to sort of just get a glimpse of him because um, she was very shy, but um, she got a couple of glimpses. And, and, and she, she liked, liked it? She liked it. Yeah. So what's the most important thing in the, in, the in the arrangement? Money? No, at that time it was really... Um, I mean, yeah, for, for a, a woman's parents, you know, they had to make sure that their daughter's going to be comfortable and... You know, she will leave. How do you find out? Like you go into their bank account? Well, you can tell by what they do, the, the job they have, do the occupation. Do you say how much do you make a year? Sometimes the people do ask that, yeah. yeah. It's a dowry thing, isn't it? It's well, it. no, dowry, dowry is money that's going to the guy. So it's a different aspect. I mean, if you're looking, uh, you know, a, a woman uh, and her parents are very well off, then certain uh, boys' families may sort of say, yeah, what do they do and what sort of business are they in and, oh, we can expect to get this as a dowry. But we, we're very anti-dowry as, as an agency. I mean, I think it's wrong. Yeah, but now, you know, especially Indian women are so well-educated. You know, what do they need a guy for except just the seed? Well, this is it. I this mean, a, a, lot of, a lot of the guys are scared of the women because they're so assertive. So you, are you guys low on, is there like a dearth of men? Not a dearth, a drought of men. No, I mean, we have a, a good uh, database of men, but there's always more women. But then women have the clock But what do they need the guy for if they're making the money? now companionship or, I see and they can't find guys in bars yeah but like they, other people here can guys in bars probably want to meet you for some other reason what, what do you think about this I hate my mother telling me what to wear let alone yeah telling me who to go out oh with. I can't imagine what my parents would have come up with it's I mean, just too exactly. frightening to even ask <laughs> my, my, my mother always says always too young for your son he's what too young they're too young the ones yeah. you pick 
What was she more upset about, who you picked or whether you wanted to be Shirley Bassey? Which one was more upsetting? <laughs> I think she likes Shirley. Yeah, but this is a cultural thing, you see. I mean, the Asian or Southeast Asian culture ha has taught us and brought us up that way, that, you know, we would let our parents choose our partners. It's only now, as we come into the Western culture, that we're more accepting, and the parents are more accepting, that, yes, go and find your own partner. And but surely with everything around and, you know, friends on television, nobody's going to fall for this anymore unless they've been kept in a cage. I mean... It's yeah, it's fewer, but it still happens. It still happens where parents are coming to us without the knowledge of their, their, their and son the or daughter. And do the kids go, uh-uh? Sometimes they do. Yeah. 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 Claire, would you do this? Cool. Absolutely no way. There has to be a connection. So the big question is, just to summarise, what do you think is the most important thing in a relationship? You tell me. I think, is uh, it money? Is it sex? Is it love? Is it friendship? What do you think? I mean, sex and a physical relationship is important to keep the fire and, and the chemistry going. Yeah. And as or far find as money, it somewhere else. Or, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. Some people do. Yeah. Um, and, and money, yes, it's important for a comfortable lifestyle, but I think it's the priority for a marriage. Okay. What about you, Claire? What do you think is the most important? Money? <laughs> it's big up there. No. Sex, love, or friendship? To One have word. everything is great. One word. Love. Love. Okay, what do you think is the most important? Vulnerability. The <laughs> willingness to be really vulnerable with someone that you care about. Okay. All right. Thank so. you very much. Love. <laughs>
content about... Uh, Small things. Yes. Wow, did you score there. <laughs> Let me just ask you, I know that you're making, you know, food things now. Yes. And that happened because, you know, I have to ask it. And does it depress you that I have to ask you? My biggest fear, your biggest fear, I think, is flying in an airplane. You, you won't get on it. It's not being in control of any, you know, it means to get off. Do you, can you get on a plane without somebody helping you on a plane? No, I can go. Of course I can. I know, but isn't there... So you have, have, a, you have a spiritualist that you call and say, should I get on the plane? Oh, no, no. I only travel on certain days. Which days? Well, I... Oh, you have to call the spiritualist? Yeah. No, she's not a spiritualist. What is it? It's Nine Key. What's Nine Key? It's one of the oldest forms of astrology known to mankind. So you Japanese. call her and say, I'm getting on a Tuesday I'm show. going to America. When's a good day to go? And she tells me, and that's Did she I ever go. say, get off the plane, get off the plane? No. Oh, right. No, my biggest fear in life is, you know, when you get those instructions from the, uh, you know, the uh, stewardess saying, take your head, put it, if this plane does start to defly, de please take your <laughs> hand, put it between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. I'm already sick to my, st it's my biggest fear. And so the fact that, that you <laughs> have been in a plane crash, I can't imagine how you're sitting here and you're normal. But I must Or say, are you not normal? I mean, do uh, listen to my hands, you know, I, uh, when, when I do fly, I get sweaty and I feel, I do feel something, you know, especially take off because you happen to take off. Do you mind me asking you, because I know this is salacious and disgusting, but I've never met anybody in a plane crash. Like you were taking off in a little plane? Yes, I was taking off a little plane and uh, we, we, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a small plane on a grass strip, and we we hit one of the propellers on the on, on the on the ground. You mean it, it tilted sideways? Well, it kind of took off precautiously, so we went back down, and we hit one of the propellers on the ground. But the mom the momentum got us up again. So you heard a cr you hear a crash sound? Yeah, I he heard a bang, you know. And at first I thought maybe we broke one of the undercarriages, and then obviously the moment the momentum got got us up again, and we went up about. Uh, 60, 80 feet, not that much. And, and, I, and I, when I looked right, I saw the, the engine was, was smoking. Oh. It. And... Sorry, I mean, that's, yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> not you, let me... And then... To, yeah. And then um, it, was, it was going up, and unfort well, unfortunately for us, it was, was a bank, big, you know, you know, big 50-foot bank on the right. And uh, the plane drastically went right because obviously one of the engines wasn't working. And at, at, that, at, that, at that position, my, my pilot, uh, he had no choice and he couldn't abort the takeoff because we would have smashed ourselves into the bank. So he had to try like hell to get us over the bank. How scared can a body get before it passes out? Because I always I think didn't that even eventually... scream. But it does everything freeze? Or do you? You do, you do freeze and I didn't scream, you know, just, you know, you're gonna die, you know. How many people book out of plane crash? You, you are going to die. Yeah. And how many? The only thing we went, you know, everybody said, "Oh, you, you see your life." You know, all these people had bad accidents. Yeah. You see, uh, life passing in front of you. Did you no, see your life? No, no, I didn't see that. I'm telling you, the only thing I thought I was just disappointed. I thought, you know, I'm going to die, and, <laughs> and you know, what? Th you're thinking, and you know, what? You know, things were going so good. I'm so young, you know, and it's like I'm just disappointed, you know. But you know what happened was like when we clipped when we clipped the top of the bang with the wing, it made the plane rotate. Oh, and you and you're away. And that's what that? saved our life. So basically, you know, we, we went wing, nose, wing, tail, you know, for about two or three times, and that softened the impact. And you know, luckily for us, a pilot died. But you know, we went through. You know, everything was banging and crashed and and we smashed our heads. I can't imagine this. I'd never get on another plane. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 well, then, you, then you wake up. Then you, well, you wake up. And you think I'm alive? Or no, do you, you don't. Think you I mean, you have this kind of uh, 180 degrees vision, and you think, "Am I on the other side?" Or you don't really realize what's going on. You know? Are, are you upside down? Or are you sitting? No, we, actually, we were flat, and and I could see the both of the engines were, were, were started f you fire and smoke and that horrible smell of burning. And I saw the pilot; he was dead. He had his head down. And, and then all of a sudden, you, you kind of come back to know, and mm -hmm. all you think is try to get out. And I went to the door and didn't exist it anymore, you know? The, the plane was so crushed and there was no door there. And lucky... So screw it when they go like this. Yeah, you know? yeah. You yeah. Were, <laughs> and luckily for us, then we had the little, you know, the luggage door, it was half open, and I managed to crawl out. Boy, thank God you're small. Yeah. Yeah. It sees an advantage sometimes. Totally. And I, only then I realized I broke my legs, so I couldn't go very far. 
and my friend was was, was, was with me, right? He got out and. You know, we got a, a full plane of uh, fuel, you know, so he, 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 he dragged me out, you know, 50 yards, and as, as soon as he dropped me, he turned around to try to save the pilot, the whole thing exploded. Wow. So I mean, one more minute, we would have all died. So we were lucky to, the, to get out twice. But, uh, yeah. you know, only f because you asked me today, but for me now, it's like 20 years ago, you know, you try not How to... How long ago is this? Only a year and a half. You try not to think of those, the horrible, and I don't wish anybody to go through it. Yeah. And but he, only then he makes you realize how lucky we are, you know. Then every day, I mean, you, you, yeah, completely, because nobody gets that close. I know. And uh, do you, do you I don't want to get that close no, for a while. No, but do you, do you still have nightmares about this stuff or not? Uh, sometimes I do. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I do. Like, did you decide after you came out of shock? Because I bet you were in shock a long time. You said, now I'm going to change my life. Yeah. You know, only only when you get out and you have your family and your kids and your friends, you think. Hey, hold on a minute, you know, it's more to life than just working all the time, chasing your tail like a lunatic. You know, might as well take five minutes here and there and enjoy so life. So what did you do? What's laugh. the first thing you did? I, I cut my workload a lot. Right. right, immediately. Yeah, I probably work only just half as much as I used to. Right. And try to enjoy life as much as I can and give more time to my friends and family because, you know, yeah. hey, you never know what's around the corner, yeah. you know? And, and and what's with this um, the food thing? Does that make you happy? You know, yeah. Doing that is that why you did that? Well, it's like, something I always it's something that uh, that I always wanted to do. I always thinking of of uh, of launching some sort of food range. But, but I always how put can a, you eat if you if you're the skinny and little? I mean, do you eat? You're yes. an Italian. Yeah, you gotta eat, otherwise you die. Yeah, but, but pasta <laughs> and pizza. That's fat. You know, most of us yeah. are behind. With well, obviously, you know, I'm not saying you gotta go and eat ten pizzas, but you know, if you eat a pizza, it's like having a normal meal. You know. Uh, look, are you a good cook? You're not too bad. Right. So did you invent this and say, I'm going to make this uh, Italian food? Well, I wanted to look, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm fed up of going to the, to the supermarket and they say Italian food and it tastes abs absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And I, <laughs> so I want to try to find an happy medium. Obviously, the food, the Italian food will never be the same like in Italy. So you think you live in the moment like now because you had this wake up call? Yeah, you have to, you know, uh, you have to live not to extremes, but you've got to live every day like it's your last one. Because you don't know what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Do you live like that? No. You don't? I don't Used either. Used to. I never did. You never did? No. If you really had that... I've got too much to do. ...something scared out of you. If you had an experience like that, where do you think... Would you or head, do you think, go, I've got to live now every second, or do you think you'd just be a nervous wreck? Yeah, but, you know, uh, Ruby, you, you're never taking travel out of... again. <laughs> no. Ruby, you're taking out a, a constant... You know, I'm not saying go out there and go crazy because it's going to be your last day, but, you know, if you've got a... Uh, an opportunity to, to even enjoy two minutes, you know, make the most of it. Sometimes we turn a, a blind eye to it and carry on working, you know, just just enjoy what we got and what we do. And but sometimes these things happen to slow you down anyway. Yeah. Sometimes these things yeah. happen. I mean, did you almost die when you were, t you know, I would think when you were, you know, taking drugs, did anybody ever say, if you keep this up, you're going to be dead? I don't, the Sun newspaper said that. Yeah, I know, but anybody <laughs> real, anybody who really is real. Uh, or do, yeah, I mean, you would have been dead. Would, you know, you can't few, keep it up. A few up. people would did say that yeah. to me, yeah. But when you're in that kind of state of mind, you don't really sort of think logically. Yeah. You just think, oh, leave me alone. Yeah. Stop interfering Let me continue in my, in my darkness. Yeah, you're stop interfering in my, in my business, you know. But um, I think that, you know, work can be a great way of avoiding life. Yeah. Are you still you doing know? that? Are you still not as much. Life? Right. Funnily enough, actually, I've actually taken... I'm not travelling for a year. I'm building my nest. What's your nest my consist house. of? Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I mean, for like four years, I never saw my house. I was traveling. The, over the last four years, I just haven't stopped traveling. And I just thought, you know what? I don't know. Anybody have any questions here? I want to talk about what gives them pleasure. You. Yeah. Frankie, if uh, you had to choose between riding horses every week or uh, a never-ending supply of Italian pasta, what would you choose? But, uh, but this is what I'm building myself to, you know, you, you can't ride your horses all your life, even if I want to. Uh, I'm looking at something else after, after horse racing, and I thought it was a great idea to start something. And, uh, you know, it might not work, but uh, at least I started something because, hey, you know, my body can only keep fit for so long. And, uh, and plus the fact that every day when I, go, when I go racing, I look behind and the ambulance is just behind us, so it's it's pretty dangerous too. So I'm, I'm looking for some, you know, something else to do in the future as well. I thought I didn't know horse riding was dangerous. I thought you just mounted up there and you're there. <laughs> Can you fall off the thing? I guess. Yeah, sometimes you do. That's right. Scary things. 
Are they? I got on one in, one, one in, in Egypt. I was in Egypt. I got on a horse and got straight off. Why? Because the power of the oh, thing I underneath I love me. being on something that oh, strong. Oh, no. <laughs> I really do. What's the best way? Like, is it beating him hard or what? Like, if, if, I, like if this is the horse, okay. what's the Let best position? Teach. Can you get out Talk. of the way? I mean, can I do it on you? No, you yeah, can You be the horse. <laughs> go on, you be the horse. I'm coming All right, here. What's oh, the God. best position? OK, stand up, stand up a bit more. There right. you go. You can start off like yeah. this. You've got to put your hands And your forward. legs are all up in fetus position, aren't okay. they? Well, that's the horse race riding. Right. But you can try that if you want. Put, right. your... put the feet up. Oh, no. We put the cushions so here. So we want to know what position to assume, don't we? It's put so important in too. our lives. And then yeah. I, you just want to be beaten. Hey, and then like this. Is that that's the position it, that you're the, in? That's the racing position, yes. And then you have one thing and you're beating it like that? Yes, well, being encouraged. Do I look nice. good in this position? Not too bad. I think it's pretty you good. You just want to be beaten. No. Come on, are you going to do the beating or not? Yeah, where's the crop? No, that's for another show. <laughs> no, but that's the position you're riding in? Perfect, yes. You, so you, this really hurts down here. Well, if you smack it down there, yes, it does. How do you protect <laughs> your um, male equipment that is so try, important in your life? <laughs> you try to give yourself a little bit of room. Right, but it's, if he's bouncing up and down... Well, you just have to go with him. So, so you must have have really strong thighs. Yes. Okay, I understand why your wife is attracted. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. As you know, every day in the show, I learn a new skill, and today I'm going to learn massage. And to help me out, please welcome Sudamo. And so to demonstrate how to do uh, this type of massage, can we bring in the boys quickly? Sure, sure. Okay, the boys, may they come in. Come forth, boys. There they are. Very lovely. Wait, do I want this one? Good. Uh, and just right down in the center of the mat. Side. What? Right down, center of the mat. Okay, Great. can I have this one? Yes. Just judging quickly, I like. No, I, I like that one too, but All right. what I, what I need you to do. Shape. Take your do, arms. When do we mount them? Let's just. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, Go. we mount them now. Okay. All right. So he's showing me <laughs> how to do a massage. First of all, take your arms Frankie's and put them at your sides. Now. Are you wearing panties? All yeah. right. Put your arms at your sides. Oh, right. You mean I have to get down on them mm -hmm. in a certain way? Oh, okay. Put your arms <laughs> down on your sides. There you are. Great. What is your name? I need to know before I mount you. <laughs> Ed. Ed. Yeah. Oh, my husband's name. <laughs> Good. I'll say I thought it was him. Great. All right. Great. Turn your head to the side. Turn your head to the side. Great. Okay. So, Ruby, what we want to do is... What, what type of massage is this? Well, what I do is uh, Ayurvedic massage. It's a yoga-based technique that's used to open and realign the body sort of passively mm. uh, by stretching the muscles and tendons. And the yoga-based stretches basically okay. set the body up to be realigned. Uh, right. So, let's do it. I just want to get down there because I'm cold. Really quick? Yeah. First things first. Yeah. Step behind like uh, me. Okay. Walk back. Oh, we have to do a kind of ritualistic yep. thing. You're going to so take you your hands, you come up underneath here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saluting the sun. Uh, yeah. Oh, I Grab have to do heel ankles. Things. Right. Lift them up underneath. Uh huh. Separate them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Now just drop your weight gently down. Gently. Gently. Yeah. Uh huh. Do you Open like that? Open up the hips. Good. Yeah. Let it go. Okay. Good. Walk up. Uh huh. Just let's get to it. Straddle right. them opposite sides with your legs. Right. Great. Now, just gently reach over, lift up the shoulder. Uh -huh. Let it go. Good. Right. Let go. Are you relaxed, you. Ed? Good. I'm relaxed. Okay. Good. Other side. Right. On national TV. No, I have good. very experienced fingers. Good. Yeah. There should be a little room right here. So yeah, you there's can... a little room. Yep. Right. Now, okay. Ruby, just uh, let right. yourself down. There I go in the gaps. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Okay. I thought that was mine the gap. Yeah, I mind it <laughs> in a big way. All okay, right. and now so, we take, what kind of oil is this? Uh, this is first press sesame seed, actually. Sometimes sesame. I use extra virgin, sometimes I use uh, first press sesame seed. This is what we use so in So you India. could eat this? These are edible oils, yes. Right. Is that going to wipe off or is... Uh, actually, the nice thing about these oils is that they... So I could eat off of him when we're done? Yeah. Or make a salad with him? <laughs> Salad's good. You could roll around in my green leaves. Yes. Salad's good. Okay. Do you want to try this? No. All right. Oh. <laughs> Do, show me what these are for. These well, are going to be good for... Though. You would be very good. I'm good with my yeah. hands. These are really good because we're going to make this you very user-friendly. You can do their fronts when I'm done all right. with them. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to do... All right. These are the erector muscles right yes, here. Yes, those would be there. Sides. These okay. are the erector... Should I do this with this you? This is fine. Yep. Yeah. Opposite right. side. Opposite the erector side. muscles. Great. Why do I need to know that? Because this is usually where... 
smile. If I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> you should smile and look happy. <laughs> Shouldn't he? <laughs> and then he wears glasses. There we are. You know, you always want to do this. And there's this <laughs> Very happy. Yeah. Um, this is, these are the muscles that connect and hold you upright. Right. So this is usually where, if you know, you sit, sit at the computer or it, usually a lot of environmental problems come from sitting. And, right. So and that's their problem. Yeah, yeah, it's all here. through here. So these are the muscles actually first I want to begin to work on. Right. So that when I begin to do stretches, I can actually get into the body. Okay. All right. Can we do the oil now? Yes. Because <laughs> it's television. We have to accelerate. No worries. Oh, so, okay. Now we uh, have to pull uh, their towel down. Just a little bit. <laughs> it's never ending. Just a little ending. bit. And you want to expose them to about right here real quick. Okay. All right? <laughs> there we go. Good, there good. he is. Now the trick That's with the, the oil. There he is. You know, it's great because it's in the name of massage. Yeah. And we're then doing we deep tissue hands. work. So you, a little bit of oil on your hands. Are you excited? Not so. Okay. Really, no, just no. dab in. A little bit of oil yeah, on the hands. On the hands. Mm -hmm. And... This is great. Put it on the body. Right. Okay. Oh, when you're being massaged, it's always nice good to say that your lower back hurts. Right. Oh, just because then they go down further. <laughs> Those are your tricks. Yeah. Good. Nice firm hands on the body. Use all as much contact as possible. I'm doing as much contact. I'm going to use my my breath. She's killing him. Am I, is this is this exciting for you? Very excited. Ed? <laughs> no, honestly. I'm do, so excited. do I feel better than great. you felt before? Yeah. My things? Okay. All right, great. Do we need to be careful of anything? Um, well, actually, it's not good, is it? I'm before we aroused. started, I asked everybody <laughs> about their bodies. What? I asked them all about their bodies before we right. started. So, what's Ed's problem? Uh, Ed doesn't have a problem. Oh, no. He Ed's will. Ed's a red blooded. <laughs> There's the little crack. <laughs> this is where you shove your magic marker. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you put your magic marker when you're not. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's my show. I can give me the straw. No, don't give me the straw. All okay, right. I'm with you We're again. Now you apply again. oil hand over hand, oh. moving up the back. Okay. Okay. So people could do this at home or uh, no? The strokes I'm going to show now actually are really good for anybody who wants to uh, learn, share learn and to give them a massage. And yeah. I think working on the floor is easy because it's also something that everybody can do at home also. Right. Um, I work like shiatsu on the floor. This way I can control my body weight and really work deep. Right. The next thing, thumbs up the erector muscles. The erector <laughs> muscles. <laughs> my dream has come to thumbs up the erector muscles. Yes. Wait, and where, Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Took the thumbs out of your mouth. All right, just like this. Okay. All right, thumb over thumb. Mm -hmm. Opposite side here. Yeah. And then An inch up, from up, the up, spine. Is that coming good? Coming up. That's is it good, good for you, Eddie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Opposite side. Yeah. Thumb over thumb. So this is ultimately to make him feel what? This is sort of to begin to release toxins out of the erector muscles. And also, look at my back. The rectum. See all this blood? Yeah. That's it. Oh, Increased so you want circulation. blood? You didn't say that. Yes. I can get you blood. Look. Look. I've got Eddie's blood up. Now okay, we'll... no, no. You're the real way I can test if you're good is that I need it done myself. Uh, so, Eddie, go. Okay, I'm going to end the show. George, thank you for arriving on the show. <laughs> you can't tell. Do it on me. Woo!